Section 3.5 is mental math and estimation. Um, and again, we're still using whole numbers and their operations in this section. Um, and I'd like for us to take a look at, um, there's two different things we're going to do. One of them is mental math. Mental math just means you're doing the exact mathematics that it says, but in your head, okay? Um, estimation means you're approximating. So don't get those two concepts confused. Mental math means in your head, and you may also be estimating in your head, but just because it says mental math doesn't mean the answer is not exact. So first we're talking about mental math, just being able to do things in our heads. Um, so this is a operation for mental math that is left to right. We've kind of talked a little bit about some left to right things with kids before. Um, and a lot of kids like to do or like to know methods for doing math in their head. Now, in terms of what are you going to write down, you're going to write down just what I'm showing you so that you can see what it is that they're thinking in their head. I'm going to see what you're thinking in your head as you work. So addition from left to right works something like this. We take the values from the left-hand side, which are a 4 in the tens place, that's 40, and a 3 in the tens place, which is 30, and we add 40 plus 30 to get 70. Okay? It's not so big that we can't remember 70 in our head. I mean, that's realistic. We can do that. Um, and then we take the ones values and we do the same thing. 6 plus 8, and we get 14. And we remember we had 70 in our head, and we can take 70 and 14 and add those together rather quickly without any doing any borrowing or carrying or anything like that, like we do when we're doing standard algorithm kind of stuff, for a total of 84. So mentally in my head, it's a lot easier for you to remember the, the tens place, 70, than to remember what I had before I carried. and I don't carry in my head. I mean, I, I don't do that. I don't expect that most of you do either. So this is another method for being able to think about that. And this is addition from left to right. Another one we have is called breaking up and bridging. All right, so here's how this works. We don't eliminate the 6 from 46. We start with the whole 46, but we break apart 38 into 30 and 8. So we only add 30 to it to begin with, just the tens digit. Again, because I'm really only adding a two-digit number that no, requires no carrying when I do that, right? So this gives me 76, and then I'm only going to add the 8 to the 76. Again, it's, a, it's only a one-place carryover, and it automatically increases the value. So this would end up giving me, of course, the same 84 that the method before did. So breaks, breaking up is breaking this down into 30 plus 8, and then the bridging is the addition of it back in when you're done. Okay? Breaking up and bridging. I quite like this method. This is called trade-off. And I've mentioned this before, and it's very similar to um, a subtraction method we have called equal additions. Trade, uh, a trade-off is where you add and subtract the same value to two numbers. So for instance, if you look at 46 and 38, the uncomfortable thing about this is that the 8 and the 6 are bigger than 10. I mean, that's, that's the part that's not so friendly. Well, it would be much nicer instead of having an 8 here if I had something that was a 0. So I'm going to add 2 to it. But if I add 2 here, I subtract 2 here. All right, so this gives me 40 here, and it gives me 44 here. And lo and behold, there's 84. I do this at the grocery store with estimation a lot, where I say, oh, look, that's a little bit more than a dollar, and this one's a little bit under a dollar. So when I put them together, it's about two bucks, right? It's the little more than, little bit less than, let's sort of just make up the difference kind of an idea. It's a trade-off. All right, compatible numbers are really friendly. So compatible numbers is something that I kind of tried to use up here, right? The eight and the two are nice because they add to 10, right? That, that's kind of why I chose a two there. Well, compatible numbers down here is the same idea. We want to add numbers together that basically add to being a convenient number. And what might a convenient number be in this context? A 10 or a number 100, actually, right? Because we're dealing with something with a zero in the tens place or in the ones place. So give me a couple of numbers you might like to add together that are friendly. All right, so 40 and 60, because that's 100, right? What else? 30 and 70, because it's also a 100. And then I've got this 50 left over, but that's okay, because the total now is 
250. And what this is really doing is it's using the associative property, it's, or sorry, the commutative property. It's saying I can move things order, the order around. I can switch the commute, I can commute them. I can switch the order around and add them in a way that's easier to work with. Okay, so that's all it's doing. Now sometimes the numbers are not already compatible. They don't exactly add up already to what we want, but they almost do. Like for instance, let's take the 35 here. 35 and something do in fact add up to 100, but it's not 68. What would I have to add to 35 to get 100? 65, right? Yeah, okay, great. But that wasn't my whole amount. How much more do I still need to add? Three, three more. So where'd that three come from? Yeah, it's the difference between the 68 and the 65 I actually already added. So this is kind of like breaking up and bridging, right? But I, w I wasn't dealing with something that was quite so pretty to begin with. I actually had to try and get something to, or notice that something would be nicer to deal with to get to 100. So I end up with 103. All right, we're going to do subtraction next, okay? Mental math subtraction, breaking up and bridging, 46 minus 38. All right, so breaking up and bridging again is the idea of taking the 38 and breaking it down into 30 and 8. So we're going to take our 46 and we're going to subtract off the 30. 46 minus 30 would be 16. And then the piece that I didn't already subtract, which is 8, can now be subtracted easy. This is a subtraction fact that you've had a flashcard for at some point in your life. Right? To leave you with eight. So that's kind of friendly. Um, there's a trading off method as well, but this is also called, has another name anyway, equal additions. You've seen this one before, in other words. It says again that 38 is not very friendly. It would be much nicer if the number were actually 40. But when I add to here, I have to add to above. Why does it require me to add to here instead of subtract to? Yeah, this is a subtraction problem, right? This is actually a subtraction problem already. So I'm going to add to to each value. So this would be 48, and this would be 40, and then I can subtract quite easily to give me the 8. So far, so good? All right. Drop the zeros. I don't know about you, but the zeros that are there are really like, who cares, right? They both line up, it doesn't really matter. In a very real way, when you do this problem, you're ignoring the zeros for the majority of the problem. So we can think about this problem as just being 46 minus 34, which would give me the value 12. But back in the original problem, of course, this is 1,200. So you're just ignoring the zeros until the end when you're including them back in in the answer. Again, the whole purpose of doing this is not because these are difficult things. It's because it makes it quicker to do in your head. If you were really doing this on the spot in your head, these methods would be able to help you from making fewer, fewer mistakes. Okay, that's good. And be able to just simply do it in your head instead of having to think through it in your head.